You're given a list of business requirements. Your job is to turn that list into a complete database design. It's a common challenge whether you're working on a new app or improving an existing system. And if you get this wrong, you'll either miss key features or overcomplicate the database. In this video, I'll walk you step by step from the requirements through to a full ERD, adding the right tables, columns, and relationships along the way. And if you want to practice this skill, I've put together some database design exercises, which uses scenarios just like this one that you can work through to improve your designs. Grab them from the link in the description. Before we create anything, let's make sure we understand what the business needs. We're going to create a system to allow a burger restaurant to take and fulfill orders for customers. Our burger restaurant wants to store a menu of items, including burgers, drinks, and sides. Track orders from customers. Record which items are in each order. Track ingredients for each menu item. Manage inventory of ingredients. Track employees and their roles and record sales and payment details. We'll translate these requirements into tables, columns, and relationships. Let's open up our ERD tool. I'm using dbdiagram.io. The first requirement was about storing a menu of items such as burgers, drinks, and sides. We can do this using a table called menu item. This will have an ID as a primary key. I'll use an integer here as well. We have a name for the menu item and then a price. I'll store the price as a decimal so we can store cents if we need to. We also have a menu category table. This stores the categories of menu items such as burgers, drinks and sides. This has an ID and links to the menu item using a foreign key. This means we can store the ID of the menu category for each menu item. That's our first requirement met. What's next? Our second requirement is the ability to track orders from customers. Here is our updated diagram. To track the customer order, the main table we use is called customer order. I didn't use the name of order because that's a reserved word in SQL as it's used as part of the order by keyword. This customer order table has an order date time which stores the date and time the order was made. This is helpful for reporting and for seeing which orders are placed when. We have an order status ID which links to a record in the order status table. This indicates what the status of the order is such as in progress, cancelled or completed. We have the employee table, which is a list of employees with an ID and a name. This is linked to the customer order table as we want to record the employee who took the order. We don't have a table for customers in this system as we don't capture any names or details of the customer. We assume they approach the front counter of the burger restaurant. Finally, we have the total amount column in the customer order table. This captures the total amount of the order, the amount that the customer pays. This is a calculated field, which is something we normally avoid, but the total amount is at a point in time and appears on receipts, so it could be helpful to store it rather than calculate it. So that's requirement number two met. The third requirement is to capture which items are in each order. We have menu items and orders, but they are not related. So let's relate them now. To do this, we add a joining table called order item. We need a joining table because a menu item can be in many orders, and an order can have many menu items. We add a table called order item, which has a foreign key to each of the two other tables, customer order and menu item. In this joining table, we also have a quantity column, which represents the number of this item in this order. We also have price, which is the price of this item for this order. This could be copied from the menu item table, which allows for changes to the price of a menu item over time without impacting the past orders. Requirement three is now met. The next requirement is to track ingredients for each menu item. We can do this by adding an ingredient table. This captures the list of all ingredients for all menu items. We have an ID, the name of the ingredient, and the unit that each unit is measured in, such as cheese slices or burger pieces. To capture the ingredients in each menu item, we add a joining table. I've called it menu item ingredient. This captures the menu item ID and the ingredient ID, as well as the quantity of each ingredient. So a cheeseburger may have one bun, one burger patty, one cheese, one serve of onion, and one serve of sauce. These two tables allow us to track ingredients for each menu item. Requirement number five is to allow us to manage the inventory of ingredients. This is so we can track the stock levels and order more if needed. To do this, we can update our ingredient table. We add a quantity in stock column, which stores the number of this ingredient that the restaurant has in stock. This would get updated by the system whenever new orders are processed. 
We also have a last update date time, which can indicate when the stock level was last updated. This could be helpful if we need to check inventory levels manually. If an ingredient hasn't had its stock level updated in a month or so, then maybe we need to check the levels of stock. Requirement 6 is to track employees and their roles. We already have an employee table, so we can expand on that. We update the employee table to use a first name and last name, just so it's easier to display the data and work with it. We have a role ID column, which links to the role lookup table. This table can store things like manager, assistant manager, or team member. This should be all we need to meet this requirement. The next requirement is to record sales and payment details, so when a payment is made and what method was used. This can be done by creating a payment table. We have an ID as well as an order ID to link to the customer order table. We have the amount, which is the amount being paid. The payment method ID column links to the payment method table, which indicates what payment method was used. This could be cash, Apple Pay, credit card, and so on. The pay date time is when the payment was made. You might be wondering, why do we have a separate payment table? Couldn't we just store this on the customer order table? We could, and that is a valid solution and should work. Having a separate payment table allows multiple payments for an order. This could be split across two payment methods, such as part cash and part card. This isn't a requirement that was listed, but could help the design. If you don't think this is needed, you can add the payment method ID and pay date time to the customer order table and it will still work. Here is our final diagram. We now have a few core tables such as customer orders, menu items and employees. We have some lookup tables for categories, payment methods and order statuses. There are a few joining tables for the many-to-many -many relationships. We've also got the functionality for inventory management. By adding tables and columns based directly on the requirements, We've kept the design focused and avoided unnecessary complexity. The one exception to that is the separate payment table. In a real project, you would want to confirm this functionality with the project team and stakeholders. If you're enjoying this process and want more scenarios to practice on, check out my database design exercises. You'll get multiple sets of requirements to design a sample database for. The link is in the description. We started with a few core tables. We then worked through each requirement in order. We added the right columns, tables, and relationships, and we ended up with a database design that meets all of the restaurant's needs. If you found this helpful, you'll want to watch the next video where I design a database for a doctor's clinic which has a different set of rules and requirements. Thanks for watching.